Hi everybody, my name is Jeremy Ziskin. I'm the author of the Jazz Piano Fundamentals series. Now with three different books, you can get a deal if you get all three at jeremysiskin.com because commerce, sales, money. Also, playing solo jazz piano. Great book, now in its second edition. Uh, the title of this video is definitely very tongue in cheek. It's, what's Chick Corea better at than me? And the answer is everything, <laughs> especially Scientology. Um, <laughs> But what I wanted to focus on today is the incredible way I find that Chick Corea takes some of our symmetrical scales, and I'm mostly focused on the octatonic, and maybe we'll talk about the uh, augmented scales today. And he's able to make these new things out of them, right? So let's talk about that. And I want to give you a little bit of information about how he does it. I don't claim to have total understanding. Chick Corea. Like I said, he's better at me than everything. So, so much of what he does is still a mystery, but maybe I can give you a few hints and you can run with them from there. So this is our C half whole octatonic scale. If you're not familiar with this scale, start studying. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the way that we create it is we alternate between half steps and whole steps. And we call it the half whole octatonic scale because it starts with a half step. We could make also a whole half octatonic scale, which would start with a whole step, and it's really a different scale. Um, it sounds like this. Right, and in jazz, we usually associate this scale with dominant seventh chords with an altered nine, particularly with a flat nine. Those are really common in jazz. By the way, some, some people refer to this scale as a diminished scale, and that's totally fine too. Octatonic is a little bit more general. It just means you've got seven notes. Um, so listen to it one more time. Okay, so really useful scale. Just about every jazz pianist through history, um, especially you know from the 1940s and 50s and beyond, uh, uses this scale in some way or another. Like Bill Evans, if he's improvising over a 2-5-1, some versions of this scale. But my experience is that Chick Corea uses it better than anybody else. Or, you know, that's kind of a silly thing to say. Um, but he's good at picking out chords from, from this scale and then using those chords in interesting ways. And not only chords, but he has certain intervals that he really likes to highlight. So how does this work? Well, we can find a lot of different chords within the scale. And by the way, this is related to the concept of upper structures, right? Upper structures basically refers to chords that we can find within a chord which is not really that different than chords that we can find within a scale. But I don't know if we could properly call these upper structures. So what's really useful to know about the octatonic scale is that any triad that we can find within the scale or any kind of chord, we can replicate minor third up. So notice that even though it doesn't really sound that major, you know, necessarily, we can find a C major chord within the scale. And if we can find a C major, because this is a symmetrical scale, we can find E flat major, G flat or F sharp major, and A major. Chick Corea uses this kind of thing all the time. That if he's improvising, That was such a that was such a crazy fail, but it gives me an opportunity to change camera angles. Right, he's very apt to use these different triads. So I don't know if you understood the example I played, but I'm playing a C7 in my left hand, and then using, for instance, an E flat chord in my right hand. Okay, so that's interesting. Uh, I have so many places to go. Now, I've talked about in, in uh, previous videos 
that a lot of these more modern sounding musicians like a triad plus one approach, basically adding either the second or the fourth of a key or chord to the triad. So for instance, instead of just C, you might play C, D, E, G, right? That would be adding the second of C to the triad instead of just an E flat triad, E flat, F, G, B flat, instead of just a G flat triad, G flat, A flat, B flat. And so what's cool about this is that you can use these, um, we're taking the triads from the octatonic scale, but the added note may or may not be part of the key. So for instance, if I use this A triad plus one over C7, we have that strong pull of the A chord, but the B is the major seven, so it's not supposed to really fit with the C7. And you can hear it kind of does and it kind of doesn't, right? It's like in between. And I wouldn't pause on that B, right? I wouldn't go, you know, that's kind of ugly. Similarly, I could use the fourth. It's really annoying the way that the that is D flat and D naturally. So that's also a possibility, um, and it goes outside of the octatonic scale, but it's highlighting that chord. So there's kind of like two layers. It's like the triad within the octatonic scale, and then bringing an extra note from that key. And similarly, I'm not gonna go over it in as much detail, but it's relatively common to do triad plus the fourth of the key, which creates other options altogether. I was about to ask any questions. I think I've been doing too much teaching. You can't ask me questions, you're on YouTube. Okay, um, and it's very much worth noting that Starting from that octatonic scale again, it's not just major triads that you can get, but you can also get a minor triad, right? C, E flat, G. And we know if you can get C, E flat, G to make C minor, you can also create E flat minor, G flat minor. I'll just write it as F sharp, it'll look nicer, F sharp minor. and A minor. And Chick certainly was very aware of all this. And uses those kinds of sounds as well. Now, I'm not gonna go through every single type of chord, but let's pause and think about some of the other chords you could make here. You could make a major sixth chord, right? Um, I'll use the thick red line, C, E, G, A. You can make a minor sixth chord, C, E flat, G, A. You can make a half diminished chord, C, E flat, F sharp, or G flat, B flat. You can make a minor seventh chord, C, E flat, G, B flat. It's maybe obvious, but you can make also a fully diminished seventh chord. All right, so. You know, if you think, if you start thinking about all the different possibilities of chords you can find within this scale, take each of these, multiply them by four, you're getting really a lot of different chords. And Chick really uses them. Another thing that he really likes doing is using augmented seconds. Okay. And so augmented seconds are this interval that if you put them in a scale, would look like a second, but sound like a third. And they're famously used within the harmonic minor scale. Now, you always need some context to make something sound like an augmented second. So when Schick does this, what he usually does is he adds a, sec a minor second on either side. 
So kind of the two forms of this would be like G A flat B or A flat B C. And this is very famously in his Matrix solo. He does a lot of Theoreticians refer to these kinds of interval patterns as melodic cells, right? And this one would be like half step plus minor third. Okay. Now, what's pretty nifty, and this is getting out of hand, so I'm going to delete <laughs> and rewrite, <laughs> is that we can find this melodic cell repeatedly in our octatonic scale, right? It's actually hard not to find this melodic cell. C. Right, E flat, F sharp, G. F sharp, A, B. And then you can't quite see it, uh, but going over the bar line, we go A, C, D flat, C, A. And Chick loves using these melodic cells from the octatonic. And using the augmented scale, we get only a slightly different but related melodic cell, which I think is also very much up Chick's alley. So this is the augmented scale. Nope, I wrote this wrong. This, let's hope, is the augmented scale. And the augmented scale alternates between minor thirds and minor seconds. It's also a symmetrical scale. And here we have a slightly different version. Of getting the same melodic cell. Right. But it's everywhere in this scale. You can find this minor third or augmented second plus half step. So Maybe Chick's thinking about the octatonic scale. Maybe he's thinking about the augmented scale. Maybe he's not thinking of any of those things. <laughs> I can't, can't really say. But let's just look for a moment at his Matrix solo. And uh, I don't think they watched, but thanks to the folks at Open Studio, I downloaded your version of the Matrix solo. I learned, I learned that solo completely by, by ear um, without writing it down. Not to brag, <laughs> such a brag. Okay, so let's look at a few instances of what we're seeing here. So, okay, this D major chord is part of the F half whole octatonic. And notice he's adding the second scale degree of D major, and that's outside of the octatonic scale. It's also outside of F7, but because it relates into that F major, or that D major, excuse me, that works nicely. Here's a nice instance of this melodic cell of half step plus augmented second. Here's another one, it's being sequenced here. Um, okay. Here's another example. That half step plus minor minor third or augmented second um, example. And then here, here's where it really shines. Right? He's really emphasizing this F A flat A melodic cell. Same interval pattern. Here's another moment. B flat, B, D, same melodic cell. 
again, C, B, A flat. So sometimes that half step is on the bottom, sometimes it's on the top. All right, that feels like a good place to leave it for today. Um, if you enjoyed this kind of analysis, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 3 has some interesting things to say about people like Chick Corea, Herbie Hancock, how to play inside changes, how to play outside of changes. So you might enjoy this blue book, Jazz Piano Fundamentals Book 3. All right, we've been talking about cells a lot. So uh, if you watch this far, why don't you comment something about jail, something about prison. Um, put that in the comments. And thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.